Hey everyone, Tech here. Welcome to Tech's Tavern. Grab a brew, pull up a chair, and let's continue our Let's Play on Crusader Kings 2, Croatia. And this episode, as you probably noticed from my brilliant title that I will come up with later, uh, is a kind of a Q&A episode, actually, before we kind of get back to the action. I also figured I would kind of show the actual terrain view here of our Croatia and its rolling hills and wide valleys and etc. A beautiful country we have created here, as long as we can hold on to it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of a Q&A episode here real quick. Um, and I will also, at the end of the Q&A here, I'll um, kind of go around the map, show some of the s events on the map, uh, and discuss some of the things I'm looking at in the upcoming episode, um, which should be following within a day of this one, whenever you see this. Um, but a couple of questions um, I did want to cover. Um, and I'll try to put the people's names up on the screen here, because I'll probably butcher the pronunciations on all of them. Um, but Padrino DK, he had asked, um, this is a great, uh, this is great, keep up the good work, could you go, um, can you do a Q&A and perhaps pro tips as well? Well, heck yeah, here's the Q&A. Um, as far as pro tips, I don't know if I'm 100% qualified to give the greatest pro tips ever. However, if you've watched all 62, I think, episodes now of this series, um, one thing some of you have probably noticed that I work on a lot while I'm playing Crusader Kings is trying to keep my vassals happy and in the green. Um, you know, I tried to control not getting into too many conflicts at once so that you don't end up getting sandwiched because you have tense relations on two different fronts. So that's why you've kind of noticed on this game I've kind of focused on one enemy at, at a time. Um, you know, and I always try to kind of keep, you know, Holy Roman Empire and Byzantine kind of off my back and not really mess with them too much while I tried to kind of build up within Croatia and Hungary and, and Serbia counties and things like that. Um, but the other thing is keeping your vassals um, happy. That's um, a big thing that um, I do try to do. And you've noticed that if you've watched this series, is that I'll constantly go into this vassal tab here, and I'll look at my vassals, and I'll sort them and see how many I have in the red. And see if you notice here, the majority of them are in the green, and actually high greens. And then I have, you know, one, two, three, four in the red here. And then I try to work on trying to get them you know, at least in low red or out of the red. And, you know, you're losing out on income, too, because of uh, uh, vassals in the red. And and to me, with this being kind of a character-driven strategy game to a certain degree is how I like to put it, um, keeping your vassals happy is probably one of the key things of the game because there's so many related um, mechanisms within the <laughs> game. Um, uh, that are related to that because you know if you keep your vassals happy you get more money more money means more troops more upgrades things like that if your vassals are unhappy that leads to less money it leads to revolts it leads to more plots against you it leads to just you know a myriad of a ton of different things that can happen to you so keeping you know the people internally happy first and also working on you know keeping your alliances and not getting too many people pissed at you on the outside is kind of in the second part but that's one tip I guess I would give is to focus on keeping your vassals happy as much as you can. That's that's one thing I tend to try to do, um, among many other probably stupid things. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I believe in one of my last episodes um, also there was uh, some discussion. Um, actually, several names here: Matteo, Matteo three nineteen, Deco Boreal, Rusty Turban, Ben Thomas Foster three, uh, Presgen. Um, they all had comments in regards to the Crown Authority, how it switched. And actually, uh, Presgen actually kind of brought it up, I think, in the previous video to that, that my Crown Authority probably swapped, and I didn't really notice, because if you remember with our last king, um, Ash, King Ash, before Lucas, um, King Ash had, uh, when he was trying to consolidate the three kingdoms that he had brought together, he was trying to... Um, he, he brought the crown authority up to medium crown authority to try to cut down on the inner squabbles that were going on between dukes and things like that and also to um, increase I believe levy sizes which is a result of, of increasing your crown authority and so he was kind of working on that then what happened is then when Ash passed away and Lucas the first took over we had a huge revolt. I don't know if you guys remember that episode. It was the episode where I actually put it on like times four speed and and sped through a big chunk of it because it was 
I don't know, it was like five or six hours or something, I think, of me fighting revolt. I mean, the entire country revolted and was breaking apart. And, you know, it would have been, you know, what, 15 episodes or something if I'd have put it all up. And I instead I compressed it all down into one episode. And um, what Preston brought up, which is probably true, is that probably when that happened, because I was so busy with all that, that's probably when the Crown Authority change um, happened, was on the when he took over and everything was going crazy and I lost a few counties. I don't know what I lose, like three or four counties, I think it was at that point. Um, that's probably when that crown authority change happened and I just didn't notice it until much later down the road because I didn't really think about it. Um, so right now I think I'm in low crown authority, which right now is fine actually because I'm trying right now with Lucas the first at the end of his reign and Lucas the second probably getting ready to take over. Um, I'm trying to just stabilize right now in case I have another massive rebellion here coming up. And I'm a little scared that if I do have a massive rebellion that Byzantine's going to decide to stick her nose in things because the Empress, I pissed her off on the last episode. So we'll see how that, you know, all breaks out. Um, uh, another, not necessarily a question, but a good thing was pointed out in one of my last episodes, a comment from West Up Outlaw, who, West Up Outlaw has been around, I know, from the beginning, because I've seen his comments on a lot of videos, and thanks very much for that, and he, he's constantly bringing out good information, but he brought up in the last, one of the last episodes about, um, keeping in mind during battles the, uh, the benefit of terrain on defending and attacking, and yeah, I, I do pay attention to that some if you went back to some of the episodes and looked. There was a few episodes where I started kind of getting smart where when I would have, I would see the enemy with, you know, a thousand death stack or something uh, come in my direction. I would just try to sit and let them come to me. Um, that was actually more, that, that's more relevant, you're able to do the defend thing to get the advantage more when you're smaller, maybe you're a duke, and you go to war with their neighboring duke, because if you only have two or three counties, you know, they're, they're going to come into the county that's bordering, most likely, so it's pretty easy to set up that kind of stuff. When you're attacking, it can be a little trickier, um, and usually a lot of the wars I've had more recently, I, sometimes I'm, I'm a victim of not paying attention to that, because usually I just try to overpower whoever it is I'm taking, whether it's through my own troops or through buying a bunch of mercenary troops and then just dropping a 3,000 death stack on a group of 500 and not really worrying about the terrain because you're just gonna, you're gonna route them out anyway. But um, it is it is an important thing to pay attention to, especially early on. If you're starting a new game as like a duke who only has like two or three counties, kind of like the Croatia, how Dimitar starts there in Croatia. If you play that scenario, um, that the paying attention to the terrain can be very important, especially in those early battles. Um, um, or in bigger battles where the your the forces are pretty evenly matched, it could be the difference. I mean, it really could. Um, and another one last question here is a question that comes up a lot from a, a lot of different people. And more most recently, I think uh, Lich Touch and Moom Ukopin. I don't know, my handwriting's terrible. I should have printed it out or something. But they both asked about um, me using mods on my Let's Play, um, like the CK Plus or the, um, I know there's the Game of Thrones, and there's a lot of other really cool mods that have been starting to pop up. And I definitely will be doing that probably on the next series. And I, I don't want to mess with any of that stuff. I've been actually trying to hold back from messing with anything on this series because I don't want to somehow just do something stupid and corrupt it and end up, you know, losing the series. So I've kind of been avoiding that. And I know a few people are, have been groaning, and it's an, an issue that's come up in the last couple episodes, is that this series is going to take a very long time to finish because I've done, like, what, 60-something episodes, and we've only covered about 100 years, really. And so we still have quite a ways to go. And again, I'll, I'll repeat... Um, I will try to do some things over the upcoming episodes. If there gets to be some really, really boring parts where nothing's going on, um, you know, perhaps after Lucas II takes over, if we take care of the rebellion and then we kind of go into a long period of peace or something, I may cut out a section for an hour or so um, just to try to speed it along a little bit. But the other thing is, is I may not make it all the way to the end, so keep that in mind. I may not make it all the way for the next 300 years or whatever. Um, you know, when the hordes start coming in, if the Byzantine decides to, if, she, if this Empress, if she decides to take me out here, and there's an endless space problem. I'm, I'm trying to drag the map with my pointer like you do in endless space. Um, if Byzantine, if the Empress gets pissed at me and she decides she's had enough of me, uh, she may come after me. I mean, she's... She's at war right now with somebody, so she, she's, 
may leave me alone for right this minute, but um, like I said, we may not, we may not make it more than another 50 to 100 years, so we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, so anyway, that's it. I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the episode here and try not to ramble on any longer. Um, as far as the map here, we'll take a quick look around. You can kind of see Byzantine and what's going on, Holy Roman Empire, um, Queen of Denmark. Okay, there's Kaiser Ludolf the Great. And um, he's definitely got his hands well. He's in a bunch of truces. So, um, but this kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in some of these. England looks fairly unified over there to a certain degree. France is <laughs> split up. Um, yeah. It's going to be some fun coming up pretty soon, I believe. Um, wow, Sweden's actually held on pretty well, haven't they? Not too shabby. And, of course, remember that we did just get a claim on the Saks here, so we can actually, um, I believe, yeah, we can actually claim, well, we can claim Greater Poland. Was that their last episode? Oh, but it's not for us. It's for Doyum. Mm, not sure I'd want to do that. But that's something to look at. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the situation. that We were talking about perhaps invading Poland and taking Poland here. And then that way we would have a big front for everybody to attack <laughs> attack us but we'll see how that goes but um the next episode should be coming up pretty soon if you guys have any other questions or suggestions for the upcoming episode please leave them in the comments below um everybody it's very much appreciated sticking with me on these series um i know i was on vacation so some of it's been dragging on it's very appreciated all your comments thumbs up all that stuff is great it keeps me going um, I'm trying to get some other series going and do some other stuff, um, some pretty interesting stuff coming up. So anyway, again, thanks, and I will see you next time in the tavern.